But it is instructive that at that time, the spirit was about the continent of Africa. We were conscious, the leaders were conscious that Africa decolonized without unity would remain weak. And of course, Africa is weak. The weakest continent on earth is this continent in which we are, our continent. So the struggle for independence was everywhere across the world, across the, con the continent of Africa. So when on the sixth day of March, Ghana regained her independence as Ghana, it was then Gold Coast. I think the most eloquent and the most passionate warrior for Pan-Africanism was Nkrumah. He said on that day, and again later, that the independence of Ghana means nothing if the rest of Africa is not free. And he meant it because when Ghana regained independence in 1957, one year later, Guinea regained her independence. A year later, the French Sudan, or what we now called, we call Mali, regained her independence. They signed a pact to create what they call the African Union. They thought at that time that that would be Africa in her embryonic days. And they invited Patrice Emery Lumumba in 1961, but of course Emery Lumumba was then assassinated in the month of January 1961. And he warned, this is, this is one of the things that, that, that uh, is, always stands out in my mind. That Nkrumah of all leaders at that time was able to see that if we were not united, we would go nowhere. So in 1958, he summons a meeting in Accra, Ghana, of the then independent African countries and tells them, if we don't unite now, the neocolonialist is going to ensure that we remain disunited and we remain small, and they are going to ensure that the neocolonial project continues. In 1961, on the first day of January, again in Casablanca, Morocco, he tells his audience, let us unite now before each one of our leaders beget, begins to get used to power, because power is easy to get used to. You who have been elected will know. Once you become a minister and you, begin, you become used to people saluting you and opening your doors, if it happens for one month, you will find it very difficult if you lose your ministerial position when there is nobody to salute you and to open your doors. That is how attractive power can be. And he warned the people then. But the colonial project was alive and well because as they were meeting in Casablanca, Morocco, there was another group that was meeting in Monrovia in Liberia. That is how Africa started splitting. Creating two groups, the Casablanca group and the Monrovia group. The Casablanca group, which comprised, I think, famously, Kwame Nkrumah was there from Ghana, Gamal Abdel Nasser was there from Egypt, Ahmed Ben Bella was there from Algeria, Medibo Keita was there from Mali. They took the view, unite now. The Monrovia group, comprised of William Tubman at that time, Emperor Hale Silasi was also in the Monrovia group. Mwalimu Kambaragenyerere 
was in the Monrovia group, they took the view, we want to unite, but gradually. Let, let it be gradual. So that when Emperor Hale Silansi of Ethiopia convenes a meeting in Addis Ababa on the 23rd through to the 25th day of May 1963, there are two groups already. The Pan-African agenda is already being watered down. There is the Casablanca group, and there is the Monrovia group. And the creation of the OAU was a product, was a victory for the Monrovia group. And I want you to, the, there were 32 heads of states and government who met in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, on the 23rd through to the 25th day of uh, May, the year 1963. And I want you to listen to all of those speeches or the compilation of them. There is a, a compilation of them that was made in the year 9, 2013 when we were celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Organization of African Unity. And listen to all the speeches, and I pick out a speech from the leader of Central African Republic, David Dako. David says, Central African Republic is so small that if we are not a part of an African Union, the French will come again. And they have come again. 